Everyone was in love with him and everyone's a basic hoe and I'm just one of the basic hoes. Hi, it's Annie. Welcome back to my channel. As you can probably tell, I'm filming on my phone for this video because my camera broke. <laughs> Guys, my camera broke. I'm so sorry. I have to send it away for repairs and stuff. So I honestly don't know when I'm going to get it back. So in the meantime, I still wanted to make videos for you guys. So we're going to go back to my roots. Honestly, the majority of my channel was filmed on a crusty, dusty, musty iPhone 8. It's going to be phone for now. And I'm in the process of moving. That's what my background looks like. Honestly, Yeah, but anyway, this video I've decided I feel like the books on book talk have really changed I feel like it's not giving cruel prince shatter me anymore At least like not on my side of book talk I decided that I want to do a video like this again where I read the most popular hype book talk books At least the ones that are being recommended to me ones that you guys recommend to me a lot and read them See what I think see if they're worth the hype give all my opinions and stuff like that Of course the trusty dusty Kobo makes a reappearance, but look look at how cute I have a couple books on the set list. So the first one that I want to try to read in this video is Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. This book has been recommended to me for a really, really long time. Like, but I never read it because you guys know that I don't love like fluffy, cheesy, rom com books and stuff but wow everybody loves this book and like always talks about how amazing it is and like but i really can't do cheesy and i have a really low cringe tolerance normally when i read romance i like the ones that literally tear your heart out because it's like so traumatic and like very emotional those are the kind of ones that i like but i really do want to give this one a shot and i just saw a tiktok edit of it and i was like okay Oh my gosh, I'm a victim to the algorithm. I'm so easy. Anyway, I think I'm gonna start off with that. All I know about it is that the main guy character's name is Wes because I see him all over my TikTok and all over my Pinterest. Oh my gosh, they're coming at me. I'm being so indoctrinated. I feel like it's like fake dating-ish, which is another reason why I didn't love fake dating, but you know, I feel like I'm in a new era. So I'm willing to give it a shot. Okay, there's so many famous like lines from this book. Some of them are really, really viral on book talk. So I'm gonna try to see if it lives up to the hype. And then the next book that I have is Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. Yup, that monster of a book. And I've heard such amazing things about like the found family, how it's like the addicted Callaway sister books. And I love that book series. And then I also have The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. This one is one that I've been meaning to read for such a long time. Everybody loves it. Everybody talks about it all the time. I just don't like fake dating. That's why I never picked it up because I think that's like what it is. But even though people don't don't love the first book. I have heard everybody obsessing over like the other brothers, like the second and third book where it's like the other brother. And I can be in it for the long game. One thing about me is that I will be in it for the long game. Want to see me reading all these hyped TikTok books and keep watching this video? I'm sorry that it's on my phone. <sighs> I think the first one I'm gonna start with is better than the movies. This one, because I think it's fairly short. I just came back. Send away my camera, by the way. So, oh my gosh, I think I just saw like a possum or something outside. What the hell? But better than the movies? Hold on, where is it? I don't even have a chair or anything in here. Better than the movies. I am halfway, almost halfway through. And this book is literally gonna be a five star book. I'm obsessed. Like, I literally couldn't stop reading it. I'm actually really impressed because if you know me, then you know that I especially hate, not hate. Hate's a strong word. But I especially don't enjoy contemporary fluffy romance books, especially ones that take place in a high school. Writers just like do a really poor job of like writing dialogue and like interactions between the teenagers that like actually make sense and are organic and are not like weird and cringy and obviously an adult catfishing as like teenage characters, you know? But Lynn Painter, period. The banter between Wes and Liz, like this is like the quintessential friends to lovers romance, by the way. I am literally gonna be recommending this for any friends to lovers romance that anyone ever asked for it ever this is obviously one of the best that i've seen it done like wes and liz are like childhood neighborhood friends like they're not like super close right now and they're kind of like playful enemies because they always have to fight for the same parking spot so they don't really know each other that much but of course they like know each other and like are you know talking stuff like that but they're not like friends friends and you see them becoming friends friends here because liz is trying to get with wes's friend michael and he's gonna help her and in exchange for that he's gonna be able to get that parking spot so that's the deal because of that they obviously spend time together and like, I'm eating pasta. Like, <laughs> I'm in love with Les Bennett. 
everyone was in love with him and everyone's a basic hoe and I'm just one of the basic hoes. If any men are out there and like want to know, if they want to know how to pull like it's like the way that he's so nice, nice in like the female gaze, casual chivalry. Like there's so many times when like he's driving her around and it just like mentions that he like opens the door for her or like closes the door for her, like carries her bags and stuff. Like it's like the little small things that shows that he like cares and was like brought up, right? And like it's like the chivalry, like it's so easy. I feel like this is actually hard, cold proof that like being hot has nothing to do with the way that you look. Of course, he looks like a tall glass of water, period. But like you see Liz throughout the book start to like notice Wes like more and more. The more that he is a nice person, like he's just like the annoying neighborhood kid at the beginning. But then when she sees like, oh, like he actually does care, and oh, he did this nice thing, and oh, he's actually really nice guy you see her like slowly throughout the book being like oh like i never noticed like he smells really nice his build and this and this like personality makes the physical attractiveness you know what i mean like say it louder for the people in the back like and suddenly he's the hottest man ever and like the actual friendship between them i feel like is one of the best that i've seen because that is like my condition for friends to lovers like a good friends to lovers is that the platonic friendship has to be there and has to be so solid and like everything's built on the back of that you know what i mean and this is like they just do it so well you know what it gives it gives like the type of guy friend who like will give you a hard time make fun of you, embarrass you, but then like when it really counts, like you know that he's a ride or die. If any of my guy friends are watching this right now, read this book. Read this book and take notes, please. I'm gonna finish this today, or I'm gonna try. Reading books like this makes me understand why men might deserve rights. It's called Better Than the Movie. Look at it. Memorize it. <laughs> what? Do all men need to read this? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my gosh. We finally got to the famous line that I've seen all over Pinterest. <laughs> She's not you, what? She is you. Sorry, I keep having to put you guys in like all these weird like angles in my room because I don't have a tripod. Oh my gosh, what do I do? So I just finished the first book of this video. I rated it a five star. Everyone needs to go read it right now. You know what? I am the biggest YA high school contemporary romance hater. I'm a hater at heart. Oh my gosh, this is the best book ever. I'm simply in love with Wes Bennett. He is the standard. What I didn't love about this book was obviously the third act conflict because unfortunately every romance book is plagued with a third act conflict. I'm like, can we just talk? So I didn't like that, but we have the quintessential like prom scene and it was also giving like the duff a little bit because there's like a little secret spot. Like at the end, Wes Bennett like off to a great start. A book talk, you might be onto something. Lynn Painter, I will literally kiss every single one of your toes. Okay, the next book that I'm gonna be reading is Ta-da! Bonnie 13. Okay, I actually already started reading this book. I think I read like half of it. I feel like I could like really get into it now because I was honestly into it when I was reading it. It's about um, our main character. She's a girl named Shannon and she comes from like the most rough, traumatic upbringing you'll ever hear. This is the first book in the Boys of Tommen series, by the way. It's like, blowing up on TikTok. Everyone is talking about it. And then she ends up meeting Johnny, Johnny Cavanaugh. And he's like, the, I think they play... What sport is it? Is it like lacrosse or something? They like come across each other and apparently has like the best found family ever. This popular boy, new girl, has a rough upbringing. Like he wants to protect her. Like it's that kind of vibe. And then also like he has a best friend and then like Shannon's friend, they have a vibe together and they have their own book. And then also Shannon has a brother, an older brother named Joey. He has a girlfriend whose name I can't pronounce. They have their own book. I already love Joey, I feel like. Like I, I don't know. I'm, I already know that I love Joey. I feel like immediately though, you can tell that it's like really dated. It was written a while ago and I think you can tell. They always emphasize like how small Shannon is and like how weak she looks and things like that. And I'm like, oh, okay, we can just relax with that. Shannon is like really resistant to like opening up Johnny and like getting into anything with him. He comes from a really abusive household. Um, and so she like wants to keep that a secret. Thank God I'm already halfway done from before because this book is a monster. I'm gonna keep reading. currently walked to the bus stop. Um, we just finished my undergrad degree, so there's that. Yeah! That would give an update because now I'm 72% of the way through Bonnie 13. I think that I'm falling into the party of like, I see the appeal, I think. But uh, I don't think that I'm in the party of like loving this book. And I think that the main reason is because I think like different from the Addicted Cal A Sister series, I really don't see like the character development happening like pretty much at all. So the girl main character, Shannon, she is like very like weak and vulnerable. There's nothing wrong with that because like she literally has such a traumatic home. I'm now 72% of the way through this book and there is just like no signs of like her <laughs> changing even nothing in her monologue there are even being hints or foreshadowing of the fact that she is like gonna change and i feel like that is making this like not that 
fun i need the development so yeah that is my main thing about it i'm gonna try to finish it and i think like that is like one of the main appeals of like the addictive calorie sister books is that yes all of them at the beginning are like very very flawed and they're always gonna be flawed but then you see them develop even if it's not right away you, you see their like motivations change or like them wanting to change and there's just none of that happening here everyone <laughs> i look so tired we just finished like an eight hour road trip i am in another province and i'm staying in a hotel for tonight so oh my gosh here to announce that i ended up not oh my gosh i was so close to actually finishing finding 13 i literally have like 100 pages left but i decided that i don't know something about that book like i just can't finish it i think like well first of all i think that it's just hard to keep reading about shannon being literally battered and bruised there's just no signs at all that like that's gonna change from what i said that this book feels really dated like i really i really feel that really hard because especially like the other like women in the book that like aren't like the main characters who are supposed to be like the villains it's just like women hating on women and i'm like why do i have to read about this especially bella bella <laughs> of course there has to be like the ex girlfriend like johnny's ex still caught up on him and then like is terrorizing shannon and ruining her life she is just written to be such like like not a girl's girl like such a woman hater like, she just treats shannon terribly and is so mean and i like that is so hard to read about because women mistreating and hating other women is literally my least favorite thing ever it's just a classic old book like written to be like very one-dimensional i feel like that about all the characters in this book actually like they just seem really one-dimensional to me one thing about me is that i'm a character girly and so if i don't feel attached to the character like i'm just not gonna like the book and like the characters just don't they don't feel real to me so i can't care about them because real people aren't really one-dimensional like that Instead, i started obviously you saw i started reading the fine print and i'm already halfway through almost um it's by lauren asher she wrote the dirty air series i don't love like her writing style that much but i, I love the characters from this book already like it's about three brothers declan cal and then the youngest one rowan so this is rowan's book they're all like the heirs to like fictional disney imagine that so when their grandfather like passed away he like left all three of them in his will like a task to complete in order to get their share of like that company and so his task is to become the director of dreamland which is like disney world pretty much um to become the director and like fix it and like make it thrive and stuff like that about that process he meets zara and she is like one of the workers there very grumpy sunshine like and you can tell that she's like been through something terrible and that's why she chooses to be sunshiny all the you know what i mean and i actually love that so much i already really like her character like she's just so like she just brings like sunlight she just brings like this energy rowan i think he's known for being like the really callous like businessman like really brutal i feel like all of lauren asher's character always has like some kind of daddy issue like he is secretly an artist that's why his grandfather wanted to make him the director of dreamland and like become part of like the designer team to like rekindle his spark for like art that his father had like smothered also has like anonymous falling in love trope Some of them are like texting each other but zara doesn't know that rowan is pretending to be someone else it's like that trope like i actually hate that trope but i actually like it in this one because rowan is actually like a nice guy and you can see his like actual personality where I am um, and what this new background is. I am in a new province in a new city and this is the little studio that I'm staying in for this month. So this is gonna be my home for the next month. So get used to it, I guess. <laughs> Such a vibe. I don't, I've never had a TV like this before. So this is actually very, very fun. Something about Lauren Asher's like books for some reason, same thing happens every single time, which is that it's like promising and stuff like in the beginning. Like I like the characters. I like the dynamic. I like the backstories. It always hits so good, but then it always, flops in like the same way for me okay maybe flop is like too harsh of a word but it always disappoints in the same way which is like the arc of the relationship is so stunted this one was actually pretty promising but then i don't really know like halfway maybe 70 percent of the way through it's just so stunted like suddenly they're like in love and like dating and things like that and i'm like when did this happen like i swear it's over the course of like 10 pages they went from like being barely strangers like not even friends to like being in love with each other yeah i guess right now we're just like in it i guess and this is self-insert if you end up dating a billionaire making me want to become a sugar baby actually he's just gonna jet her off to new york city just as a surprise date 
Is this a joke? Okay, hi everyone. Unfortunately, the lighting is literally so terrible everywhere here. Finished the fine print last night. I feel like I'll give it like a three out of five. Maybe everything that I said about it still holds true. The relation was just very stunted. And I feel like after that point, I was like not that interested. Actually, a book that I did start on my phone, actually, that I didn't talk about at the beginning, which was The Foxhole Court. I think it's the first book in the All for the Game series. I feel like I have like seen this book on TikTok, but I just like never knew really what it was about. I actually heard about this book because one of my favorite youtubers offhandedly mentioned that like the only book series that she loves like the foxhole court series it's just not what i thought that it was gonna be our main character named neil but he gets recruited go onto like a college team for this sport it's like the foxes team so he meets like the other foxes there but he's actually secretly running away from his father who's like a mob boss and his mother like died and he has like so much trauma and stuff with him and you like discover it more and more and you realize like oh damn what the hell and on the team that he's on is like someone like from his past i just think there's like a big 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 fandom behind this book series and i like want to know why so i'll keep you updated okay wait this isn't too bad is it so last night i finished the foxhole court but i will say by the end i was literally like reading this and i was like like that. I saw Lala's review on Goodreads and I'm like, that's actually a perfect representation, which was like, this is terrible. I must read more. <laughs> I didn't realize that so much of this Nora's imagination, she popped off with her imagination because this is like a sports book. Not really, but it's all in the backdrop of like a sports team. Like I didn't know what the sport was. And I was like, oh, I feel like it's like some like non-Canadian, non-American sport that I just don't know about. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. It's a made up sport. It's called Exy, the love child of like lacrosse and ice hockey, I think. And so every time they talk about it, I was just like, oh yeah, like whatever. Like everybody knows what it is except for me. No, it's fictional. And same with like all the recreational drugs in this book. Okay, I feel like this book requires like a like the biggest suspension of disbelief you'll ever see in your life. But I feel like if you just leave into it it'll be a good time but let's talk about the main reason why i even wanted to pick this book up which was the romance <laughs> is there romance in this book okay i rated this a three out of five stars by the way is there romance in this book i googled it <laughs> I googled it before I picked it up. I spoiled it. I'm a spoiler. The answer is yes and no. In this book, there isn't, but I think that in later books, there is. Although I'm not sure if that's fake news or not. Like I said before, one thing about me is that I'm in it for the long game. Between Neil, the main character, and one of the other boys on the team, I was gonna say like it gives like enemies to love. I feel like it gives a like, hate to love kind of. He like literally terrorizes Neil when they first come for like no reason. <laughs> but by the end of this book, he, the relationship kind of like has like a turn and i kind of like it like i feel like i kind of like the trajectory of it of like really despising each other and then turning it into like oh now they're like each other's like only allies kind of thing like oh he's the only one who can help me really like neil's character though he gives like i feel like it's just because it was giving like reich meadows and the fact that he can secretly fluently speak all these languages but like keeps it a secret Oh my god, the cutest dog just walked by. So yeah, I was hoping that it was gonna be very, very found family. Like that's the original reason why I was like, oh yeah, I'll pick it up. There wasn't really found family in it. It is just a sports team. At least where I am right now, there's like no family. They've just like found each other. That is also gonna be where I wrap up this video. At least out of this video, I did get like a five-star book. I need to get on better than the movies talk and just follow the breadcrumbs to wherever and whichever books that leads me to. Cause you guys were right. I need to stop being difficult and to suspicious and actually just start taking all of your book suggestions that's gonna be where i end the video for today thank you guys so much for watching good fortune toby